I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the founder of the church I served as a bishop. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many others have made a similar journey into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about, people who want to share their story. So if you're a Latter-day Saint seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. I'm really pleased today to introduce to you Barry Cohen, who's come all the way from North Carolina to share his story with us. Thanks, Barry, for coming. Thank you, Earl, for you're, inviting me here. Yeah, you're actually here with a, a mission group. Yes, right? I am. Coming, and we may touch on some of those experiences you've had, but uh, so as we usually do, tell us where you were born and where you got started in life. <laughs> All right. I uh, was born and raised in Louisville, Kentucky. Okay. Uh, my father was actually a service man at Fort Knox, and that's how he met my mom. Oh, that's he, close uh, to Louisville. It is. Oh, I just, should know uh, that. I just guess, right but... outside of Louisville. Wow. Okay. And uh, he uh, he came from Denver, so his side of the family is out in Denver, Colorado. Okay. And brothers and sisters? And... I have one uh, sibling. I have one sister who's six and a half years older than I am. Okay. Now, you may have caught the name Cohen, so you, you were actually, you are Jewish? I or? am. I am by heritage. Okay. Yes. Yes. And the uh, family was active as, as Jews, Orthodox, uh, as you'd call it, I, I guess? I wouldn't call my immediate family Orthodox. My, my father was uh, a pretty faithful uh, Jew. Yeah. Uh, my mother actually uh, was 50% Jewish. Her father was Jewish, but... Uh, my grandmother was uh, a Gentile, as yeah. we would call, okay. call them. There's probably a whole story or a, that we could do on just uh, the Jewish culture that I, I know very little about and, uh, and f so fascinated and part of our Christian heritage, of course, uh, what, uh, the Bible and everything. But I guess we'll, so you grew up there in Louisville and, yes. and uh, yes. went to school there. And do you, do you go to Jewish school or did you go to public school? I went to a public school, but uh, I went to uh, a Jewish synagogue. Okay. And so we occasionally go to services and uh, growing up I went to Sunday school. Okay. Now, does what does the what does the what did you learn as a, about Jesus as a as a Jewish person? Did was he just one of the prophets? Is that kind it, it, of he really wasn't talked about at all, oh, and that's okay. what from from my perspective was uh, interesting because uh, at an early age God planted a desire to know who Jesus was. Surprisingly, really? even though there was no Jewish influence, even from my grandmother who was a Gentile, she. Uh, I don't, I don't know if she converted to Judaism, but she yeah. accepted the, uh, the Jewish culture and traditions. Wow. But I just remember I was probably 10, maybe 12 years old, and uh, going in to the rabbi of our synagogue and asking him, you know, can you tell me about Jesus? And the response kind of I got, shocking. first of all, after the shock <laughs> of, of the question, yeah. was pretty much the pat answer that uh, you typically hear, that uh, he was a good man, uh, and uh, he was, uh, may have been a prophet of God, and he was a, a, a great teacher, but we don't yeah. believe that he is uh, divine. Did they call him a rabble-rouser? No. Would, you, would they no. say that, that, that he was a good... Man of God, then. Just a good man of God, okay. faithful, a uh, good teacher. Well, that's an interesting insight mm -hmm. that you had, or a sense that you had so young. Yeah. Yeah, it was interesting. That yeah, did your parents, uh, did you pose those questions to, to them at all? Well, not really. I spoke to my mom years ago uh, when I was trying to witness to her. And yeah. uh, the only response was, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> and uh, if your father was still alive, he'd punch you in the nose if he heard <laughs> Not you talking happy like with that. that. Yeah. That's right. So, okay, so what happens, I guess, through high school, and then, then what happens in life? Through high school, I, I associated with uh, other uh, Christian students, Christian friends. Probably a lot of Christians, not very many uh, not many Jewish Jews. Uh, no, we had some Jews uh, uh -huh. in okay. my public high school, but okay. uh, I 
tended to uh, gravitate, I guess, toward more of my uh, Christian friends and okay. colleagues. Any Mormons that you ran into N then? Not that I recall, no. Okay. no. All right, so you get through high school then? I had one friend who was a Christian who uh, kind of took me under his wing and uh, actually took me down to uh, uh, a river in Louisville and, and baptized me. And uh, what age was that? That was about, I'd say about uh, 17. Now, were you accepting Christ Actually, at that I had point? It, 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 uh, 16 oh my in goodness. bed one night. I, so tell uh, us about that. Well, I had some influence from the mother of a, of a friend of mine that uh, would talk to me about Jesus, which would pique my interest. But uh, <laughs> from what I recall, it was really the late great planet Earth by Hal the Lindsey. Book. The yeah, book. Okay. And it had just come out, I think, in the early 70s, and I had gotten a copy of that. And so one night in bed, I just asked Jesus into my heart. And it was, it was what was so incredible was I felt the Holy Spirit Come in. coming into me, but I didn't know what it was. It wasn't until years later that I realized that that was the Holy Spirit indwelling me. But you had a sense then that something happened. Something definitely happened because it was like, wow, <laughs> what does this mean? Yeah. And uh, I will say, though, that I wasn't discipled after that. So, meaning what? Meaning, meaning you weren't uh, being taught? I wasn't being taught. And you so weren't going I to a Christian church or anything? Uh, occasionally I would go with neighbors to uh, a Baptist church mm. in the area, but... Uh, there wasn't too much in the way of, of teaching to me, per se. Yeah. I'm not sure why. You didn't relate as but much. But I just, I guess I didn't relate as much. Yeah. And honestly, I don't know if it was just my heritage. You know, it's like, yeah. is this guy really a Christian? <laughs> you know, he, his last name is Cohen. <laughs> is he really Christian? But uh, I found out how necessary that is. And somebody accepts Jesus, Jesus yeah. to be discipled and to be taught. Yeah, be fellowshipped and yeah. stuff. So, so he talks you into, or maybe you ask to be to be baptized then, and he takes you. Uh, he does, and he takes me uh, down to the river and baptizes me. And then when I went to college, he was also at the same college that I was at, oh. and so I got into a little Christian fellowship there. So you started being a little more discipled, so a little or bit more discipled. Yeah. Interesting. And uh, so I guess this was early on, a babe in Christ probably, as yes. it were, but uh, what did you think of Jesus then at this point with the Holy Spirit and all? Well, I was still, it's hard to remember that, but it yeah. was, I was still in a, in a learning stage. In a learning process. More of a questioning, yeah. uh, <laughs> more of a, yeah. Just kind of soaking it in, I guess. Were you reading really the Bible at this point? A little bit. When reading? I would go to the Bible studies, yeah. I would 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 read okay. what they were asking us to read, but not really doing it on my okay. own. So then, what happens? You kind of go along with that for a while. You get through school, I guess. Got through school, and uh, it was actually about uh, five years after graduating from college that I was unemployed mm. and uh, it was pretty you know down in the dumps about that time and that's when the Mormon missionaries came and oh, they were okay. tracking our neighborhood and this was in Kentucky this was in Kentucky okay and I just remember thinking boy it's hot out there it's you know it was like in the upper 90s so that you invited summer. them in <laughs> so they came to the door and I said well come on in I'll give you some uh, give you some water and maybe some other refreshments mm, that's and, uh, nice of you so what did kind of a message did they share with you? Uh, their basic uh, Mormon principles, I guess, from what I can yeah. remember. This has been a while back. Sure. But, uh, did you have a sense that they knew Mormonism from what they were saying? Uh, looking back, I think it was pretty much scripted. It was, uh, yeah. I don't know how much of it. I think one of them was devoted. I could tell he had a... a, a, a 
what I'll call a heart for Mormonism. Yeah. But I didn't get the same sense from the other one. I think oh. he was about ready to go back home, and he was kind uh, of through his mission. Be, yeah. Be done. Yeah. Did you the message they were giving you? What was that about? What kind? What did they share with you? Ah, Can you remember oh, back boy, when they was, were? Uh, such a long time ago. Well, I don't want to refresh your memory, but do you, I mean, or at least think what I would think that they would teach. I don't know how long ago this was, but was this back in the... This would have been back in 60s, the, 70s, the uh, early 80s. 80s. Early 80s, okay. Early 80s, yeah. It would have been uh, right around 82 or 80. Well, I guess the leading yeah. question is, is they talk about Jesus, or did they talk about Joseph Smith and the First oh, Vision oh, and yeah, the Book they, of Mormon? Right. They, they would talk <laughs> about Joseph Smith and, and the First Vision. Yeah. And, uh, they read some out of the Book of Mormon, and uh, and why we needed prophets today. And, yes, you know, yes. Yeah, you know, I know I'm leading you a little bit. Did you sense that they were teaching you about Jesus? Oh no, no. Oh really? No. Okay. But I I liked just their I guess I maybe call it reverence. I don't know for yeah. lack of a better term for uh, religion for overall. religion overall yeah. and uh, their especially the one that I connected with, his uh, devotion to Mormonism. Yeah. And uh, the sense of, you know, f I guess fellowship and belonging that uh, they, they emphasized. They invite you to church, and didn't they? About the uh, second or third visit, I think it was about the third visit maybe that they, they invited me to church. Okay, did you go? I did. <laughs> then what I happened? Did. Well, that's when I met my wife, actually. Was it? It was. Uh, she had been a Mormon at that time about five years, and uh, I met her at a Mormon church picnic. Okay. And uh, it was about a year later that we 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 married. Doesn't uh, God move in mysterious it, ways? It was amazing. <laughs> As a matter of fact, we timed our wedding to be uh, one year after I joined the Mormon church. Okay. We were married... Uh, in 1983, October 3rd. Where at? In uh, the Atlanta Temple. Okay. And we Drove were, over there. And we were living at, in Louisville at the time. Yeah. And so we we had a, a temple marriage. Oh. One year from the date of uh, joining the church. Now, was your family, I guess, with you? Uh, I mean, they couldn't go into the temple probably, right? N neither, neither family uh, came down to Atlanta. We just had oh. some close church. Mormon church members. Friends that could yes. go in. And yes. They, did they wait outside or did uh, they even go? No, they our didn't families even go didn't go. I think my family, especially my mother, was hurt that uh, yeah, we got married in that fashion. Families are together forever <laughs> as long as your <laughs> temple recommend holding Mormon. Exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. Well, that's interesting. What did you think of the temple experience? So? Uh, overwhelmed. Were shocked. You? Yeah. It was interesting because... Uh, we went in for, for breakfast that morning, and uh, it was just when they had opened the cafeteria. And they asked me to, to open the cafeteria with a prayer. Wow. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, that uh, it was just overwhelming. Yeah. And then as we went through uh, the ceremonies, actually scary. Yeah, this was early 18, uh, the 19, uh, 1980s again, yes. so it was before... The changes in 1990. That's right. That's so right. They had the old uh, rituals and yeah. the old uh, signs and pretty shocking. Yes, huh? it was. Yeah. So you now now you've married a an active Mormon and you're active and just life goes and I guess children. Do you have? We have we have three daughters. Three daughters. Uh, as a matter, matter of fact, our first daughter was uh, married was born about uh, 11 months after we married. After you got so uh, we had a pretty quick family. Yeah, uh, and then uh, two other uh, daughters followed, about two years apart. Yeah. So the three of them about two years apart. So just a good little. And was there a ward there at the time? There was or a branch. Or there was a did, ward. So a ward. Okay. Uh, I became actually, I believe they called my position executive secretary to the was, bishop to the, to the bishop yeah. uh, kind of the ones that makes kind of baptism by fire yes Mail makes appointments one who made appointments kind of sits in on the uh, oh. bishopric meetings yeah. yeah was that an interesting experience it was, it was very so you were you an elder then at this point well you had to be yes. to go through the temple that's right. sure yes okay mm -hmm. so when you first got baptized uh, in the mormon church then uh, was that a difficult decision for you? I mean, you'd been baptized as a Christian. Did you sense a, 
okay, I do need to be baptized into the true church? I, yeah, I felt like I did because I was told, you know, this was the one true church. They didn't and, have the authority before. And, and that that's right. And so that wasn't uh, the it's correct type of baptism to have. Yeah. Well, gosh, just, I mean, there's so much to cover, I guess, in this area, but was there anything unusual for you with the Mormon doctrine or the temple or anything that you may have heard, something that bothered you at all at well, this point? Well, there were some things uh, that uh, I'd have doubts about in terms of like what? Just, like just, well, uh, basically, my wife and I, having our own planet and uh, oh, really? populating our own planet. You started hearing about those started things. started hearing about some of those. Uh, my wife and I read uh, parts of Mormon doctrine. So we, we got uh, some of that yeah. from the old Mormon doctrine. Right. And uh, there was some, some doubts about that, but then we'd get back into the fellowship <laughs> and, and the church setting. And of course, the Mormon Church keeps you pretty active, and yeah. so it's it's hard to really think too hard about <laughs> things. You don't spend uh, much time that's doing right. yeah. And it was just that sense of belonging and fellowship, yeah. I think, that would continue to be the draw. Now, I guess you your culture with the with the Jewish culture, you trusted and believed in the Old Testament. Yes. Uh, the New Testament. Then, as a Jew, was that a was that a book that you trusted or had any put any stock in? I did. I oh, did, did, but I was drawn more to Isaiah in the Old Testament okay. and Revelation in the New Testament. Okay. And su surprisingly to some, Ecclesiastes was, was oh. a draw to me as well. Then as a Mormon, were you, did you sense that the church put any emphasis on the Bible? or No, I, it... I, I thought the emphasis was more on the Book of Mormon and the Doctrine and Covenants yeah. primarily. When they say read the scriptures, they're usually referring to the... The Book of Mormon. That's right. So did you get through that, the Book of Mormon? Oh, yes. Did yes, you pray about uh, it? I, I did. did and I actually, I prayed about it before I joined yeah. the church, and and I got a confirmation, but uh, I know where that confirmation came from. Now. Isn't that funny how we have that warm, yeah. but that isn't necessarily factual. Right, which, that's right. Yeah. I've found over time that uh, <laughs> what God creates, uh, yeah. the adversary tends to... Uh, Imitate. So, did, no, that's a good way to say it. Did you then? So, you were active with your wife, and so what happens after this? Well, we were very active. I uh, served in in different positions along with my wife, certainly. I'm sure, uh, she did too. Huh? Yeah, different uh, positions. We were very. We always made sure we were temple worthy every year when we came. Mm -hmm. Uh, when Temple Recommend and the and, interview yeah. came up, and yeah. we would visit the Atlanta Temple. Uh, at least once a year. Yeah, bus over there. Now there's temples in... There is one in Louisville, even. Oh, yes, Louisville yes, now. Yes, uh -huh. Okay. Did you go to that one? No, at the time they didn't have one there. The okay. uh, closest ones were uh, Washington, D.C. and Atlanta, in Atlanta at that time. Okay, so what happens in your journey that makes you look at things a little differently? Well, we uh, ultimately made our way up to Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Oh. Uh, I Ooh. took a position, excuse me, with a... Uh, an insurance company up in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, and uh, became uh, active in the church up there and actually uh, served as the first counselor in the uh, branch presidency okay. uh, while we were there. Yeah. And uh, was uh, very active. I mean, we were pretty much an active family uh, it, uh, the whole, the whole time yeah. that, that we joined, although uh, and I'll let my wife speak on, on this yeah. at a later time, but uh, she she had some doubts from time to time. Oh. But I was just gung yeah. Well, what happens to shake that up? Uh, uh, I guess I got to the point where I realized I couldn't perform the way I needed to perform. In other words, uh, didn't matter what I was doing well. You weren't doing enough? I wasn't doing enough or wow. I wasn't doing things, everything at 100%. And so the focus was not on what I was doing well, but what I was not, what I was falling short on, oh. I guess I should say. So you felt some guilt over that? And I felt or? some guilt and yeah. stress and, and some anxiety over that. Hmm. I guess the tipping point, though, was uh, when... Uh, 
one of the uh, home teaching families, uh, actually, um, the, she was a dear friend of ours, uh, uh, who had severe asthma, asked uh, me along with my other uh, home teaching companion to come over and give her a blessing because she was having severe anxiety, uh, asthma, asthma attacks. attacks. Sick, yeah. And so we went over there and uh, she asked me to uh, confer the blessing on her. And uh, the blessing I gave her was that she would uh, have a long life. She would live to see her kids grown and grandkids. And uh, she didn't have to worry about uh, premature death. And you felt inspired and to say that. And I was totally huh? felt inspired to say that. Yeah. And then three weeks later, she was dead. Oh my goodness. So I went uh, to one of the stake meetings. Yeah. And I asked one of the uh, stake presidency, be, yeah. how, how could that be? How could yeah. I bless her with a long life? And feel now totally she's dead. inspired with the yes. priesthood and all exactly. that. Exactly. How, how could God let that happen? And yeah, what did he say? And his response was, well, that just means uh, that she was, is going to have a long life in the eternities. <laughs> And I thought, well, I, 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 that by its nature, eternity means we're all going to have, have a long, have a, long life uh, in yeah, a limitless good or bad. <laughs> life. That's right, yeah. a limitless life. And oh. so that just didn't make sense to me. So I started having real doubts at that point and oh. uh, recalling that my wife from time to time would have some doubts, yeah. would have some issues about uh, going through the temple. Yeah. And uh, what uh, capped it off, I guess, was... Uh, I was extremely busy at work one week, and uh, that week led into a Sunday that I was giving the talk. I was giving the main talk at uh, the sacrament meeting, right. and I just called the branch president on Saturday night and said, I am just totally unprepared, and I just I, I can't get up there and give a talk. And he said, well, that's fine. Just, just come on and sit up here with us. We'll find somebody to... Uh, to take your place. And I said, I'm not going to do that. I said, my name's in the bulletin. Yeah. I'm not going to sit up here with, with the <laughs> and then not say anything. Chin and not say anything. Yeah. And so I told my wife, I said, I'm just not going anymore. And she said, you're what? I said, I'm just not going anymore. And, Interesting. Uh, and so the second Sunday came and said, I'm not going today. What and, did she think? Well, she I mean, and you've been so her, dedicated. I've been and, so dedicated. And, yeah. and she, at that time, it, it was odd because she had been having doubts over the, the 10 years that we were married from time to time, but she was in a good place <laughs> at this at particular point, time. Yeah. And, uh, but she was very devoted, and uh, she stuck with me. And did she I, go to church? She anyway? did, but uh, she, I don't mean to steal her thunder again, no, no, no. but... Uh, she basically uh, told the uh, branch president that uh, she was going to give me six weeks <laughs> to come back. Mm -hmm. And if I didn't, uh, she wasn't coming back either. So the Lord really blessed us that we oh, came wow. out basically together. That is wonderful. Did you look at anything else? I mean, were you, you weren't influenced by doctrinal issues or history of the church, or were you, or how did you... Not at that time. It was more like, I'm just going to take a respite here. Okay. And so what my wife did was ask uh, one of her friends, I think at that time, what to do. And she had a, a, actually had a Christian friend up in, I believe it was the oh. Seattle area, or somewhere okay. in the Northeast. And she said, this is where I'm at. And this is where my family is. Right. Uh, kind of like, can you pray for us? Well, this uh, friend actually uh, overnighted to us some anti-Mormon literature. Oh. And so when it came the next day, my wife said, uh, you, well, should we open it and read it? <laughs> and I just said, well, we're so unworthy now, you might as well open oh, it. <laughs> and You felt totally guilty. and Totally unworthy. guilty. But that's what opened up both of our eyes. That kind of m that, materials yes, and stuff. Yes. And I really believe that because I was a Christian at a fairly early age as a teenager, that uh, God blessed us to seek Christianity and seek a yeah. Christian church to start attending, and, and so that we did. 
did you during this coming out process did you sense that Jesus was was missing in your life yes the, oh yes absolutely as a matter of fact I remember uh, saying to the uh, congregation to kind of you know uh, the Mormon congregation to the Mormon congregation that uh, you know that uh, we need to be covered with the, the blood of, of, of Jesus <laughs> and, yeah, and of course I got a lot of, of uh, blank Mormon stares and one, this was in one of my uh, talks oh my goodness yeah, yeah. and so it uh, well how has it been we're just unbelievably almost out of time uh, how has it been for you what have you learned oh, and where are you grace. at I've learned uh, just so much about grace and God's compassion and his mercy yeah. Uh, when what I've also learned is how easy it is to be deceived, even if you are a Christian, if you don't really know the Word and you, yeah. you don't really study the Word, you're susceptible to believing yeah. any uh, false doctrine as truth. And the Mormons use a lot of our the same words. Yes, I mean, absolutely. They use grace, and, yes. but they, they really rely on earning their way to, to God, yes. don't they? And that's another thing that, again, with, along with uh, grace, I think knowing works has given me a greater appreciation for grace and just yeah. God's love and compassion. Isn't that a great freedom, though? Yes. To worship and to have Jesus as a personal relationship with yes. Him and, and not have men in between. Well, again, we're just almost out of time. Is there anything you want to say to your family, friends, or... Anything to summarize? I just uh, thank you. I guess one of the uh, blessings was just uh, knowing that after we had come out, the people who were praying for us. It's just amazing, if nothing else, just the prayer and the love that people had for us. Uh, like, even as though they did, the as we found the truth yeah. and then found out yeah. that those. Uh, friends of ours were praying for us. So we had no idea that they were praying they for us to come out. And they told you came out. Yes, it was kind of interesting. Just real quickly, uh, we had the kids at a, an Awana event. It's a little... Yeah, uh, you're Awana. You're yeah. familiar with for Awana? The youth. Yes, for the youth. And uh, their uh, counselor in uh, elementary school was at Awana. And she came up to us and said, What are you all doing here? <laughs> and we said, Well, we're part of this church, a Christian church, and she basically said, well, I thought you all were Mormons, and said, no, we came came out, and she just burst into tears. Oh, so thrilled. And, huh? and told us the, about the prayer. And yeah. you know a little bit about Mormon, more about Mormonism now than you oh, ever yes. did before, huh? Yes, but I also have a love uh, for, for the Mormons. Yeah. And that's why you're out here, to, sh to, to learn and share. You've been to Temple Square. Yes, so. that's right. Well, Barry, we're done. Oh. Yeah, it was so quick. Yes. Thanks for joining us, and we'll get to meet Robin next time. So, thanks. Bye.